Hi everyone. Today we are going to start video series or video lecture series on Fourier transform. So uh, before starting a new topic, there are some questions which comes in our mind. Okay, that where does this topic is used or what is the application of uh, these topics then uh, how to define this means how to define Fourier transform okay then third is that how do we apply Fourier transform so there are three basic questions comes in our mind so uh, this is the first uh, video in this series so we will try to answer all those things so it's kind of introductory lecture so uh, if we see uh, the application so i can uh, say that in general the transform or the transformation is a mapping from a set a to b or mapping from a domain to another domain okay so uh, if we take one example it will be very clear okay let it be this a and b there are two persons okay a knows english and b knows hindi and they don't know other language okay so how they communicate now a told a statement how are you now how b will understand because b knows only hindi okay so here what will help to understand what a has told to b so here transformation is important so if we transform a means language of a that english to hindi then we can translate uh, what he has said to b okay so the in hindi how are you means aap kaise hain now a knows english so english is the domain b knows hindi so hindi is another domain so english domain will be controlled by english alphabet and words okay uh, by their sound writing similarly hindi so to connect from english to hindi we need a transformation okay so that it can translate so in general transformation role is like that so transformation what happens so if we see a uh, signal so signal is defined in time domain but we need the sing signal in terms of frequency domain so what do we do we need transformation okay so if we consider then in general okay the basis of nature or universe is vibration and most of the physical problem are in terms of sine and cosine okay and here the fourier transform also sine and cosine that's why Fourier transform is so useful because we can apply many many physical problems and solve okay from mathematical point of view if we say then Fourier transformation is also used to solve ODE and PD and we know that uh, most of the physical problems or science problem are governed by differential equations that's why uh, the role of Fourier transformation is such important okay now next we will see what is Fourier transform means how to define Fourier transform then we will see the mathematical application of Fourier transform means how to solve differential equation using those and how to represent function all those things we will see Fourier transforms are classified into two categories 
depending on the nature of the function okay so uh, if the function is even then we will get Fourier cosine transform if the function is f of x is odd then we will get Fourier sine transformation and for that we have the condition that f of x is piecewise continuous and absolutely integrable over r then f of x is even so if f of x is even so what we can do we can write the Fourier integral so Fourier transform will be derived from Fourier integral okay so f of x is even then we can represent f of x in terms of Fourier cosine integral so Fourier cosine integral will be what f of x that is 0 to infinity okay a w cos what w x d w and what is a w a w is 2 by pi times 0 to infinity f of v cos w v d v okay now from this a w we will derive what is Fourier cosine transform now a w I can write it as square root of 2 by pi into square root of 2 by pi then the same integral we will represent now here if you just see after this square root of 2 by pi this factor if we consider this factor so this factor we will write it as like this so square root of 2 by pi and that factor is f cap c w so this c represents cosine so for cosine you are writing c now then we will see what is this so f cap c of w this will be what square root of 2 by pi 0 to infinity f of v cos w v dv so this i can write it as equation 1 okay now what will be the function then now the function f of x if i write then we have to replace this value here so it will be 0 to infinity okay and a w is there but a w is what this so this we have to put so finally we will get this square root of 2 by pi into 0 to infinity integration 0 to infinity what this one f cap c of w into cos w x dw so this is our equation 2 so equation 2 or we can write formula so formula 1 this one formula 1 is called Fourier cosine transform of the function f of x okay similarly formula 2 is called the inverse Fourier cosine 
transform of f cap c of w like this so similarly if the function f of x is odd then f of x can be represented through fourier sine integral now fourier sine integral is what f of x equal to 0 to infinity b w sin w x d w but what is b w so b w is 2 by pi times 0 to infinity f of v sin w v d v so from this again similar way we will extract so it will be square root of 2 by pi into here now it will be the factor will be f cap s of w so here s represents sin okay for sin function we are writing s now what will happen then f s cap w will be square root of 2 by pi integration from 0 to infinity f of v sin w v dv okay this one so this i can write it as equation 3 okay i'll tell you some modification will be there so now f of x how we can represent f of x will be what square root of 2 by pi integration from 0 to infinity okay f cap s of w into sin what w x d w okay so this will be our equation 4 so simply formula 3 is called Fourier sin transform of f of x then formula 4 is called inverse Fourier sine transform of f cap s w okay now here we will see that and we have already told so transform will uh, be a mapping okay from one domain to another domain so first domain there will be x another domain there will be w so what we will do in this formula one okay in place of w will sorry in place of v we have to write x means we will change v as x okay similarly in formula three in place of v we will write it as x so final expression will be this now this one will be the Fourier cosine transform of f of x and this three will be what Fourier sine transform of f like that but what we will do for simplicity all these notations we will use this capital F C okay of F is F cap C then we will use another notation F capital F S of F equal to F cap S so in the following lectures we will use this notations capital F C capital F S so in this way we can define the Fourier transform 
So in le next lecture, we will see some example problem and we will apply this Fourier uh, sine and cosine transforms and solve some problems.